Welcome back to the LVMH Gallery. We're about to dwell into the LVMH-led Aura blockchain and find out how it's going to revolutionize the whole concept of buying and owning luxury goods. Recently, LVMH has joined forces with two other major luxury names, Prada and Cartier, part of Richmond, of course, but to develop together the Aura blockchain consortium, the world's first global luxury blockchain. To learn more about it, I'm really happy to be joined by Charles Henri Levaillant. Uh, Charles Henri, you're the Digital Client Development Director of Louis Vuitton. Bonjour, Marjorie. <laughs> Great to have you on, on this set. And Gauthier Pigas, Gauthier, you're the Head of Innovation and Blockchain at LVMH. Bonjour, Marjorie. So, um, Charles Henri, maybe first. I understand that this blockchain originated at Louis Vuitton. Indeed. Uh, it originated as an idea at Louis Vuitton that we had for uh, authenticating our products. And we believe that uh, inviting uh, other luxury player actors to join us uh, would be a, a good idea for a, a blockchain to thrive. You know, it might sound new to you, Aura, but at Louis Vuitton, it's already a reality. All our leather goods are already Aura enabled. Which means that every single good though, and luxury good, has a real traceability and authenticity. Can you show us what it actually means? Of course I can show you. If you hand me this beautiful... I'm going to show you. <laughs> twist the... handbag. Yep. I'm going to be super careful about the twist. I go on the handbag. Uh -huh. And now I scan, click, and the magic happens. It authenticated. Now I can see, and as you can also see on the screen, that it has been authenticated. It's authentic. Uh -huh. But I can also see where it was produced. Uh -huh. I can also see when it was made. And I can see that it was made using the highest environmental standards. And this is something that's very important to our clients to build the trust. They want to know the source. They want to know where the product comes from. They want to know if it was built sustainably. And for us, it's also important because we want to show that sustainability and authenticity are linked. The consortium and the blockchain itself is called Aura. It's super evocative, but what does it mean to you? To me personally, Aura, it's uh, trust, it's about peace of mind. It's about, uh, I would say, serenity. Mm -hmm. And this is something that has huge value for our clients. And therefore, we found the name very uh, appealing. Indeed. Um, so um, now, Gauthier, you're definitely the man behind the blockchain and you're definitely uh, heading this uh, blockchain innovation at the group's level. Um, we're going to, to dive in detail into what the consortium is all about. Uh, first, you do have competitors in this industry, right? But you've been um, fortunate enough to work with them super closely on developing this consortium itself. Um, how did you make this possible? We made it possible because it's a collaborative uh, spirit from the beginning. Uh, it began at uh, Louis Vuitton with a discussion with uh, Cartier and Prada, uh, even a few months ago. Uh, and it was possible also because we needed to, to propose a dedicated and independent technology for the, on the market to answer to the new luxury uh, market expectations. So this is why we decided to create Aura. Uh, it's an association. It's a non-profit association, but all the de developments that we are going to, to do uh, are possible because of the fees that the maison uh, which pay uh, for, to use the platform as a license. And I do understand blockchain is useful all along the value chain. Yeah, as you say, uh, we are talking about the entire product life. Uh, so it means that we need to go from the upstream to the downstream. And when we're talking upstream, we're talking about B2B. Uh, how could we have information from the origin of the materials, metals, for instance, diamonds, leathers? How could we follow uh, the, the distribution network? And so on and so on. And at the end, we also want to create and to propose a new storytelling to our consumers. We want to create a link with them. We want to make sure that they get information about the product. Charles Henry showed that just a few minutes ago, uh, and it is de definitely what we want to create to have a very nice storytelling and luxury uh, storytelling. 
How exactly do the consortium serve its members? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's quite simple. It's an association, uh, which means that we are going to develop the platform thanks to the license of the uh, users of Aura from uh, different luxury uh, groups and maisons all over the world. And the second uh, thing is uh, because we need to understand what we can do as a business case with Aura. As you know, we come from the upstream to the downstream, so it's very wide and transversal. So we need to help our maison to understand what they could do. Uh, what could be the business case, depending on their strategy, the data that they get, they get from all this uh, product life cycle with the track and trace uh, technologies and so on. So this is why we are acting as a support, as an advisory council by a dedicated workshop, uh, sharing the, 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 the experience and the, the return on experience of different maisons, which are already using uh, Aura, as we, we have uh, Hublot and Bulgari and Louis Vuitton at the moment. Uh, so that's the way to help them to understand what they could do uh, in the near future. Yeah, it's all about uh, blockchain acculturation, and we're the perfect example and introduction with both of you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So now, how to take advantage of the Aura's blockchain? Let's ask two maisons tackling different issues. Bulgari is coming next. Blockchain can be certainly used for traceability and authenticity purposes, but it can also be used to do some good. It's the entire purpose of a brand new app developed out of Bulgari um, that gives the relationship between collecting and donating an entire new meaning. And to learn more about it, I'm glad to be joined from Rome by Alessandra Tirolo. Alessandra is a Senior Director for Global Communication and Massimo Palloni, the COO and Executive Vice President for Innovation at Bulgari. Of course, they will tell us more about how Bulgari uh, is applying the Aura blockchain to its long-standing Save the Children partnership. So, Alessandra, could you please give us some background on Bulgari's partnership with Save the Children? First of all, we have to say that uh, we have a very strong CSR commitment and we cover mostly four pillars, health, education and arts patronage. Talking about health and education, we have been working with Save the Children since 2009, so it's more than 10 years. We created a dedicated jewelry line and for each piece, a consumer buys, we donate 75 euros that benefit every children in 33 countries. You have to think that until now, we have generated over 100 million euros in donation and impacted the lives of over 1.5 million children worldwide. That's absolutely incredible. And this is a part of a larger vision because we really believe that we see a CSR commitment. We really need to craft the future of luxury embracing a concrete and transparent and more than ever ethical approach because we really think that transparency is the key value that creates trust on our consumers. And Massimo, can you please tell us more about the reason why Bulgaria looked into uh, the blockchain technology in relation with CSR? Well, we really believe that in general, for the future of companies, growth and sustainability have to go together. So it's fine to think about uh, adding value for the shareholder, but at the same time, we need a sense of purpose. And we need to communicate that purpose. So the trust of the customer is absolutely the first bond that we have to build. And this means transparency. Now, there are already many technology to trace what we do, to trace our products, but the blockchain has the advantage of creating in real, absolute, immutable smart contract between the customer and the brand. And nobody can change it. So once it's written, it's there and it's transparent. It can be accessed by us, by the customer and the future, maybe even by the public, of course, with the consent of the customer. So Alessandra, can you please walk us through this brand new app? I do understand everything starts the minute you actually buy a Save the Children piece of jewelry. First of all, you start from the fact that you buy the product, you receive a card with a barcode, and you can scan this barcode. You enter this page. 
Then from here, you can follow your donation. You can fight for areas, as you can see. First one is youth empowerment. Then there is emergency. The third one is fighting poverty. And the fourth one is youth education part, as you can see. You choose the area where your gift goes. And if it's very important because you can track this and you can also fi find a story of a specific person. Then if you sign up after approximately six months, you're going to receive a follow-up on what your donation has achieved. The project helps uh, give people a sense of purpose with specific respect to the donation. Now, traditionally, a donation happens the moment you make it. And then it's over. It's transactional. Here, you can follow the transaction over time. You can follow the donation over time for the small or the big contribution that you decide on. I think that probably this is the main difference. You give a second life and a sense of purpose to the donation. Yes, and going back to what you've just said about reinventing the future of luxury, what about the object itself? You have the object existing in your hands, in your real world. But you also have an image of the same object as a digital asset. It is connected with the good actions that the object gave you a chance to contribute to. It's a connection between the customer, the object, and the donation. Because the reality is that the object, it is connected with the donation. And this is generating value for the society and for the customer. Not to be too much pretentious, but it's really a concrete step forward towards responsible consumption, what we say responsible innovation. Alessandra and Massimo, thank you so much to the both of you. And now we're going to turn to another application of the Aura's blockchain, an e-warranty based on photographs that literally fingerprints each and every watch. This innovation is brought to you by Hublot, and we're going to fly virtually to Switzerland in Nyon to meet with its CEO, Ricardo Guadalupe. So, Ricardo, let's dive in this uh, space age innovation. What makes Hublot's new e-warranty a fundamental shift? At Hublot, uh, we always want to be uh, very innovative, uh, very creative. This is really important for our brand. Uh, we used to have a warranty card that was physical, a uh, bit already with an electronic chip. But we really wanted to go full digital uh, with our warranty card and to be able to guarantee the identity and the authenticity of uh, our Hublot watch from the day it has been produced and uh, to uh, all the, his life. Um, for that, uh, we wanted really to rely on the structure of the material and to store all this information in the Aura blockchain. And uh, with this, we are sure that we will give an incredible service and uh, inspiring confidence to the Hublot consumer to buy a Hublot watch. Yeah, and I guess uh, authenticity is crucial when it comes to fine watchmaking. Counterfeit is still public enemy in your industry, is it? I would say this is a problem for the whole Swiss watch uh, industry. And the real risk is really that uh, a consumer could uh, lose his confidence by buying an authentic Hublot watch. And confidence is really key, of course, and that's why we have really created this uh, e-warranty project uh, and uh, Christina and Frédéric, who are with you in Paris, uh, will talk about this project with a great uh, accuracy. Yeah, thank you so much, Ricardo, and good morning to you, Christina uh, Giseres, your Hublot Chief Retail Officer. That's right, and we're delighted to be here. Thank you so much for having us. You're very welcome. And Frédéric Panatier, you're its Chief Information Officer. Yes, thank you for having us here. So, following up of the glimpse uh, Ricardo just gave us on the e-warranty initiative, why Hublot's add to go blockchain? So there's really two key objectives. One is guaranteeing the authenticity of our watches, and the second is helping to prevent counterfeiting as well as the gray market. And that we're delivering totally in line with our Hublot DNA, which is being first, different, unique. And that, our e-warranty, is 100% a technological first, in the industry and also relies on the microstructure of our materials of the watches, which is something we've been innovating on for over 40 years at the Maison. Wonderful. Frédéric? 
How about you? Uh, with this e warranty, we were able to go down to taking a picture of, uh, of uh, the, the microstructure of the product. And thanks to this micro, the microstructure, we were able to, to do like a fingerprint, a digital fingerprint of, uh, of the product itself. And this fingerprint is stored in the blockchain on Aura. And uh, Aura will guarantee that this fingerprint will not be altered and it will still be there in one century. And so, so Frederick, uh, for my understanding, how far is it different from the previous authentication system with Wozniak? So the previous uh, authentication system we had, we were able to, the technology was able to authenticate the passport of the watch. So it means uh, we were able to say this is the sole and only uh, valid passport for this specific watch. And if you have the passport and the watch that match the passport, the, the chances were very high that you, has, that you have the, the genuine watch. But in, in, uh, in reality, it was not the watch itself that was, uh, that was authenticated. Now, with this technology, we really use the, the property of, uh, of materials and we can really authenticate the product itself. The product itself becomes its own passport. It's the biometry. I understand it took you three full years to actually develop the warranty program. So what happened is we, we found a, a startup company and they already had the, the algorithm and a few uh, patents as well for this algorithm uh, and skilled people. Uh, and what we did, we really worked with them, but it was not ready to use for, for the watchmaking industry. We trust them, we had a good feeling, let's say. And, uh, and we, we worked with, with them to, to develop this algorithm further, to adapt it to our, uh, to our uh, industry. But there is also, we had to develop hardware to take the picture and those things. And all this took like four years before, three to four years before we had a solution that is working and I think working well. Mm -hmm. um, and drive us through the rollout of the entire e-warranty uh, program and application. I do understand you started back in November. That's correct. So we started in November 2020 with the global rollout and we're just about finished. Um, so essentially at Hublot, we have around 700 points of sale of which we have 118 mono brand Hublot boutiques. Uh -huh. And so of course, we're talking about a large scale operational change and it's change management. So of course we had to make sure these 700 points of sale had the proper hardware. So in our case, an iPhone 8 or newer had the application on all of those iPhones. And then of course train all of the sales associates across our distribution network on not only how to use the application, but of course to be able to explain the technology in front of the client. And so that of course takes time, but in general, we're very satisfied with the rollout. And I think across the board, our sales associates are very proud to be able to have this part of the selling process um, be available to them and it adds value to the client. So really it's, it's, it's a win-win and so far so good. And I guess this uh, digitization process is far from over when it comes to Hublot. Um, where do you see it in, in, let's say, five years from now? So as we know, the world changes very quickly. Kind but of. at Hublot, like I was mentioning before, we're focused on innovation. So we're always looking for new things that are happening and how we can take advantage of them in order to grow the business and add value to our clients. So a recent example is our Hublot Big Bang E UEFA Euro 2020 watch, which we launched with an NFT, so a non-fungible token. Uh -uh. And so 200 of these watches came with the NFTs. That was something we developed very quickly. We took advantage of the fact that NFTs were in the mass media and starting to be something that people were talking about and understanding and thus you know, wanted to take advantage of that particular technology and add it to one of our timepieces and, and the result has been fantastic. My God, this NFT mania. <laughs> Frederick, what about you? Where do you think adding? Once we have this technology, we have to find a new application for this technology to match those trends. And, uh, and I think this is where we have really now to build stuff. And I can totally say that you guys are keeping up with the pace of innovation. Thank you so much for uh, bringing us all those new innovations from Hublot. And that's all we have time for when it comes to blockchain. But stay with us. More solutions to come in the gallery.